That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, I think I'm last, and uh, given that, and given that we're doing pretty well for time, is it okay if I just take like an extra 20 or 30 minutes? Great. All right, I'm just going to upload some. No. So um, I'm Ben Twining. I am the Director of Research Education. I also do science occasionally, and um, I'm going to talk mostly about that. So is that going to work? There we go. So um, I love metals, and I love thinking about how metals interact with biology. And the metal that I tend to think about most is iron. Iron is needed as a nutrient for plankton in the ocean. And iron gets into the ocean primarily through dust. At least it gets into the middle of the ocean. And there's an example of that shown here. There's probably a, there we go. This is a big dust storm coming off the Saharan Desert, West Africa. You can see it blowing off. And um, there's a lot of interest in what are the actual trying to model the effects of this dust getting into the ocean on the biology of the ocean. And um, the effect of that dust is that in places where you don't have that dust, you actually have iron limitation of the plankton. So this is, you know, it's going to be hard to see the colors, but this is a map of the global ocean. And it shows that in these areas that are green down here along Antarctica and up in the northern part of the Pacific, you have actually iron limitation. And so in these places, the plants in the ocean can't get enough iron to grow as they otherwise would, and that affects their impact on the carbon cycle and the other things you've been hearing about today. And so we're interested in trying to figure out how the inputs of iron via dust will affect the phytoplankton in those areas. And there's you know, two, two reasons or ways why that makes it into sort of the, the human uh, impact importance. One of them is that there's interest in actually humans dumping iron into the ocean and thinking, hey, if we dumped in a bunch of dust, could we in, uh, increase the productivity of the ocean? And so there's been study into that. And there's also a lot of evidence that in the past, over the past, say, 500,000 years, that the um, amount of dust that's gotten into the ocean has changed and that you've had corresponding changes in ocean productivity and uh, global climate. So those are the reasons we're interested in this. So what's keeping me up at night um, these days is actually working on a paper um, looking at some data we have to investigate actually how phytoplankton are responding to these dust inputs. And this is a project that involved two cruises to the North Atlantic. And you can sort of see our cruise track here. We went from um, Portugal down to the uh, Cape Verde Islands off Africa. And then, well, actually, this was when the boat broke and we sort of limped back. And then there's another cruise that came back in uh, the following year. And we took samples at all of these circles, which are really hard to see. And these include areas where there was a lot of dust, 30 seconds. All right, so in these areas, we've actually looked at the iron content of the plankton. And here they are plotted from west to east. And you can see that actually, instead of having a lot more iron in the east, where you might expect, because there are order of magnitudes more dust, you actually have lower iron levels in the cells compared to the west. And this is totally opposite to what the models currently predict, and so I'm very excited about it. And just to give you a little more science, there we go, if we actually look at these are the same iron quotas, the amount of iron in a cell. And if we look at it relative to the amount of dissolved iron or the amount of particulate iron, you can see that they tend to sort of follow a relationship that you might expect in places where you have more iron in the environment, you have more iron in the cells. But there are these stations where they fall off that relationship. And so one of the things I'm doing is trying to figure out what's going on there. And a little hint, future science thing, is that I think that it's related to the types of plankton that are there. And so this is an example where the taxonomy or the diversity of the phytoplankton is important, and that's something that you've heard a lot about today, and I'm part of that group.